the next phase is to to hook up the lift to the power as you can see there is the breaker box right on the wall behind the milwaukee toolbox so i'm gonna uh go up then i'm gonna go all the way around there come back to this post and go back somewhere here i did install this additional uh, breaker box because i would like to have the 120 outlet here as well since it cannot be too many outlets and below it i'm gonna have 240 volt outlet in case i need to hook up my welder so uh it's gonna be a combination of 120 and 240 outlets here this breaker box is gonna work only for 120 volt outlet because the main uh breaker for the you know lift and 240 outlet are gonna be inside the box on the wall uh, later on most likely i'm gonna install one more emergency shut off switch for the lift because i heard rumors that the lift may run away in case this uh, button gonna stuck and uh, pretty much there is one more cutoff switch right on the top once the car hits this bar but you know you you don't want to take a chance so if you know that the the button is stuck you would like to uh, you know cut off the power right away and not waiting until the car gonna hit this uh limit switch on the top so that's the game plan uh so yeah that's already installed and uh, when installing something onto the lift uh you drill the the holes but you need to drill them carefully because on the opposite side inside the lift there are those sliders going up and down uh and as well right there in the middle there are those kind of notches uh that actually holds the uh, the the arms in place so you don't want to have some something too deep otherwise it's gonna catch those notches not good um, and remember i told you it's a next step not the last step because i still don't know if the motor is working or if the cylinders are, are leaking or not so hopefully everything is is fine with this lift and there are going to be no more any additional <laughs> expenses in repair uh so without further ado let's let's continue with installation placeholders for our outlets and breaker box breaker box are installed so the next step is to run the conduits all the way to the top and somehow to route it uh, around there and I'm gonna add one more circuit one more breaker uh, actually I forgot to purchase it for the uh, garage door um, lift 
because it's still been wired with the extension cord since the moment I did install <laughs> install the lift so hopefully we're gonna fix it today so yeah that's the process so far one more note about this little breaker box it comes with the hot wires here could be connected that's the uh, neutral and there are no uh, place to hook the ground so they sell separate um, you know bar kit it calls grounding bar kit uh, I guess it for that box so it should be installed right in there that's my assumption okay I <clears throat> managed to wire that 240 outlet here on the lift I mean I just wired till the till the panel here so uh, there are two hot leads black and red and there is the ground lead here the green one there is no natural uh, neutral wire in here and as you can see those wires are coming here they're simply passing the 120 uh, volt future outlet and I connected them here uh, where the 240 power gonna come inside the box they are before the breakers because those two breakers are only meant for this 120 outlet and the breaker once again for those 240 outlet is not is but it's gonna be in this box on the wall I am just trying to mock up the wiring in this area first so the second part gonna be 120 outlet which gonna run from here up to those breakers I just finished the hookup of that lower portion um, so once again red and black are two hot wires going to this 240 outlet and they're going all the way here on the top um, where they're gonna meet with the wiring coming you know in the conduit from the top so this is 120 outlet and those two are separate circuits one circuit second circuit and respectively they are using uh, two separate breakers for the left circuit and for the right circuit um, 220 outlet does not require the neutral wire however 120 outlet requires uh, hot which is the black wire neutral which is the white wire and I put like the ground wire as the green one ground wire uh, hooks up right in there in a on a side uh, I did not tighten those two because they're gonna meet with the main wiring in there and it's gonna be neutral uh, for the 120 outlet so that's that so far I'm gonna close those two boxes they are done um, actually I did not decide um, what's better to do um, if to hook up the motor right there uh, I don't like this idea much because it means in this those connections gonna be connecting three wires each uh, so maybe I'm gonna hook up the motor right here so it's gonna be two wires in here and uh, two wires in here uh, in the in each hole or whatever this okay it's day 56 probably of <laughs> lift installation uh, but really I was doing the electric probably for a couple days so this is how the final project looks like I didn't cover it yet so I can show you guys uh, how it works I decided to connect the lift to 240 with this NEMA uh, 5 I mean 650 outlet I decided there is no chance I'm gonna use the lift let's say and the welder at the very same time that means I can use this outlet as well for for the lift and don't worry about it 
uh, so once again 240 120 this 120 goes through this uh, uh, 15 amp 15 amp uh, breakers one breaker for each side of those and then it goes all the way to the uh, panel on the box let me show how you, how I route it conduit goes right there makes the turn makes the turn goes up to this kind of expansion box I'm gonna uh, explain later why I installed the expansion box there then it makes the sharp turn right there goes all the way to the motor so I finally have the motor connected properly without any extension cords then uh, it goes kind of down angle and it's coming here to one more outlet I install it I guess I can use it pretty often and from that outlet there's the conduit I installed going right in there so it's not just a uh, wire hanging it's been done with the conduit from here uh, connected inside this outlet box <sighs> so it's the breaker for 240 volts this one you can see uh, hot wires red and black I installed this breaker to power up this outlet and that outlet so the uh, lift or the motor for the garage doors actually I would say is on the different it's on the on the different circuit so the reason I installed this expansion box is in case I'm gonna install the uh, another lift right there I'll be able to actually hook the wires from this outlet box take it all the way there in this expansion box and then they can you know, let's say whatever take it there or maybe if the cord is long enough I can install the outlet right there on the top and I can hook up this uh, motor for the lift from that outlet so that's the reason uh, yeah another thing uh, so I was you know checking everything uh, making sure like I have like 240 here like all works good and I knew pretty much this uh, container is empty but pr I expected to have like some uh, you know residual you know fluid like couple drops so I installed I actually not installed I put the paper towel here I connected you know this 240 outlet there and I pressed the button for um, I don't know half a second maybe less so I was expecting if there is any residual uh, fluid it is it's gonna just spill into this paper towel so the paper towel flew away all of that was in hydraulic fluid you can see all <laughs> all the mess even there on a the tractor so it was literally less than half a second um you know spike <laughs> so yeah i can uh, confirm the motor is running <laughs> throwing the the fluid so the next step i'm gonna do is i'm gonna disconnect the hoses from the from the cylinders and i'm gonna use my compressor to uh kind of purge them from any you know debris they may have like from being manufactured or fabricated uh, so I'm gonna uh, kind of connect the compressor in here and it's gonna blow the air you know from from this side and from the other side so that's my game plan and uh, by the way in regards to the cost of the materials I used uh, to make this outlet for the lift I guess I am somewhere in 300 bucks roundabouts uh, give or take probably the most expensive part are the wires I used I used 10 gauge uh, wires for uh, 240 like red and black I used uh, and uh, and I used 12 gauge 
as the ground for 240 um, setup and then I used 14 uh, gauge ah, neutral I used 12 gauge uh, for this outlet and for the outlet for the motor and the outlet on the wall I used 14 gauge wire 15 amp breaker for this outlet and that outlet 14 gauge wire for it uh, and 20 amp breakers for those outlets that's it pretty much I'm gonna hook up the con uh, compressor right now I'm gonna disconnect those lines so I can blow the air and uh, that's it I'm gonna fill it with the with the hydraulic fluid and we'll see if it's gonna start actually it starts I know it starts we'll see if it's gonna do something I don't know if the cylinders are any good okay I'm gonna shoot some compressed air into this inlet hose that's gonna split the stream to those uh, two columns and what we should see you know something coming out from this hose on the, and the same thing gonna happened on the other side let's check it out if, if it's gonna do any I guess this should be enough if there were any debris if there was any debris it's prob probably already flew flew out so I'm gonna go ahead and connect those hoses back fill out the reservoir with the fluid and we'll see if it works I don't want to over tighten it so we'll, we'll take it slow okay I purchased a valve line DEX Merc uh, transmission fluid it's compatible with Dextron 3 which is required for that lift since the cylinders are in a lowest position possible it will take the total capacity of fluid so I can put like the maximum okay I wasn't expecting it's gonna take less than one jug and a half to fill this thing so we're overflowing also I don't see the markings of like um, minimum and maximum for some reason or, or at least it's not obvious <laughs> 